to go down there as well and visit to join the Baptist Church. Down into Chapel Lane. Then we're going to walk up this beautiful country lane. Lovely colours of the orchard. Now we're going to go into Church Lane. Up to the church. Different. Normally I'm like driving and everything, but uh, I thought to myself, no, nope. I'm in a beautiful place. Some of the graveyard there just over. It doesn't matter what time of the year you come to Burley, it's always beautiful. It gives you its best features. Just outside the church. And look at that. More ponies. Lovely. Let's have a let's see how far we can get. Without going too near them, obviously. Or it coming too near to me. Hi and welcome to this episode of Cemetery Strolls. We're at St John's Baptist in Burley in the New Forest. See a big red poppy crossing at the back. We're going to have a look. There's some people near the church at the moment, so I'm just giving them their time. And then I should go in there and have a good look. This is the other side. I have not a clue who is here. So, that's something I'll have to check up in a minute. I just thought while I'm here, I'll just get some of this. And we'll come back out and check some of these in a bit when <clears throat> the ladies have left. I'm not quite sure, it's quite new actually. So, it's 30, 1932, it's been cleaned not long by the looks of it. But I can't work out who the poppies made before. Because somebody passed in 1932, Arthur passed in 1932, age 79, so he would have been too old. <coughs> and there's uh, Edna. Paxman, unless she um, obviously did something through the war, looking at her age, she would have been in her 20s, so I can imagine that she would have been, no doubt, doing something for her country. Mind you, a lot of ladies lived in the countryside, or some of them from the cities like the Birmingham and Liverpool, they went and worked in the countryside on the farms as land girls, as lumberjacks. I'm hoping I've got the lumberjacks right for the ladies' meaning of it, but uh, yeah, you could never tell. Just because they were still alive after the war didn't mean they didn't serve in the war or any wars. It's maybe looking a little bit like a, a newer section, maybe. There are some old ones in here. St 
stone just in the bush here. It looked a bit a weird shape whether I was just looking at it at an angle. Lieutenant Colonel. Looks like Mackenzie. I should think, but uh, I'll have a look, but uh, MDI, MS, we'll have to check that out. I can imagine, you know, this all blooming, the hedge, either white, red, whatever colour it comes out as. It must look absolutely stunning in the spring, in the summer. So we're, we're going, I think. It's, it's a village church, so it's going to be one of those where, and this is a very busy village, so I think it's going to be one of them where I've got no choice, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully I'm not going to interrupt anybody's thing, but if I'm not speaking, it's obviously because people are in their Beautiful windows. I do, you know, I don't mind people talking, but it's when they know you're going to film, so they decide to actually talk louder than they were when you actually arrived. Beautiful windows. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a St John's Baptist banner for those who like the banners. George, that's the courage we need at the moment in Britain. St. George's courage. I know I'm not normally political on my channels, but the way this world is going at the moment, we need to be together, stick together, rid the world of the wokeness. In memory of Charles Edward Honman, 1882-1936, elder brother of Trinity House, and his wife, Mary Muriel Holman, 1885-1978, who devoted herself wholeheartedly to this church in the village. That's lovely. We've actually got something on the window, regarding the window here, so... Obviously, those who want to watch it will probably have to pause it. It will tell you everything. You know, maybe go back to it after, if you're watching it live. It's amazing how 
church windows all tell a story. Not necessarily religious, but uh, of heroines, of notable people of the area, and their work that they've done for their community. Here's the pulpit. I'm not quite sure how old this church is. I will have to check up because it does look modernish, probably 1800s maybe. But there are so many churches in the New Forest. I won't go into the chapel because there's nothing to film in there. It, it is modern and also the chapel I, I seem to, you know, feel is literally where is your pace. So look at it. In memory of a happy childhood, 1845 to 1854, the joining portions of this churchyard known as Church Cottage was presented in 1916 to Burley Parish Church in memory of the two youngest children of Lawrence Hill, LLD of Burley Lawn. He's Scottish. Uh, William Henry Hill and Leticia Marion Hill of Toronto, Canada. Lovely. That's a bit uh, different, you know. Normally, it's maybe for church wardens or such. But uh, to the beloved memory of Major William Ingoldsby Miller, the Royal Tank Regiment who on the 15th of June 1941 gave his life while leading his squadron into battle in the Solemn in the North African campaign. Thank you for your service, sir. There we've got the front. Does look modern. The lid, well, the top doesn't, nor does the lid. Some symbols on the top. Must be for the millennium, just uh, for that. For God, King and Country, the Roll of Honour. You've seen the one down in the, or uh, well, if you haven't seen it, or if I haven't put it on yet, there will be a video with the um, the cross, the War Memorial, which is actually in the village, not by the church. Thomas Holloway of Burley Lodge, who departed his life April 20th, 1839, age 57. Like I say, I, I do think it's a newer church. It's probably been more done inside, I don't know, but... It is nice.
Arthur Hamilton, 10 years church warden of this parish. William Morris Fletcher, Justice of the Peace for Hampshire and Dominica, who after 28 years served in the Revenue Survey Department of Bombay Government, lived for many years at Burley Beacon in the parish. Basically, the parish for 10 years, Edwin Wigram, Wigram, 1892. In memory of John Frank Howe Andrews, Flight Lieutenant RAF. The Spitfires, obviously, in the hurricanes. Well, look, actually, they look like hurricanes. Another memory of Vernon Churchill Simmons, Manor Farm, Burley, one of the few and all of his fellow pilots who helped save this country in the summer of 1940. Never in a field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Words of Winston Spencer Churchill, 1940. To the Battle of Britain pilots, that is. I've even got goosebumps now knowing that I'm actually by a plaque of one of the few. If it wasn't for the few, where the Germans would have invaded without a doubt. The RAF won the biggest aerial battle of its time in history. I found some information uh, in the Dorset Echo uh, of uh, 19th of May 2005. Air Hero Honoured. A second World War Spitfire will make a sweep over the Solent of Milford on Sea on Saturday the 21st of May in a final salute to Battle of Britain pilot Vernon Simmons who died this year. Subject to weather conditions, the Spitfire will fly overhead of the ashes of Mr Simmons as they are scattered off of a boat off the needles off the Isle of Wight at midday while his family and friends and former comrades watch from the cliff tops. The famous fighter aircraft, which are like wartime pilots, enjoyed their finest hour during the aerial combat which stopped Hitler's planned invasion of England in the summer of 1940, will also take a low-level pass over Mr Simmons' home in Burley, a manor farm in the New Forest. One of the few remaining examples of the Mark West still flying the Spitfire will be brought down from its base in Yorkshire by its owner and RAF Tornado Jet Pilot Wing Commander Paul Day. The Ashes Drop operation has been organised by Mr Simmons' fellow Battle of Britain veteran and long-time friend, Wing Commander Paddy Barthrop from Lymington, who earned the DFC and AFC while flying Spitfires and later spent three years in a prisoner of war camp after being shot down in 1942. Although Mr. Simmons flew Spitfires during the war, it was in the cockpit of the less famous but equally effective Hawker Hurricane fighter that he joined the ranks of the Battle of Britain pilots, immortalised by Churchill's famous declaration, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed to so many.
by so few. Later, Mr. Simmons flew Spitfires from Oldsby Aerodrome near Ringwood, where he met his wife Shirley, then a RAF driver. At the end of the war, Mr. Simmons retired from the RAF with the rank of squadron leader and was the European Reservations Department Manager for Pan America Airlines until 1949 when he retired to Burley where he built his manor farm home and established a herd of pedigree freezing cows. Mr. Simmons who died at his home in February at the age of 85 was also a local councillor in the 1950s and a keen sail sailor and a member of the Royal Yacht Squadron and cows on the Isle of Wight. He survived by his widow and children. Let's go and have a look outside. many here but um, we'll have a look to see what we can find that's uh, Edith Oldham who died May the 4th 1929 age 69 and Herbert Ullman brother of the above who died January the 29th, 1939, age 82. That's a, a big old thick stone. Those who like their yew trees. I'm hoping I'm picking that up. problem is when we're literally out in the countryside it's um, the algae obviously and the moss is going to overtake well it does look nice especially in the autumn but it does make it hard to read for us Fungi. Come over here because what we have one three three four nine five five aircraftman second class H E Wheeler, Royal Air Force, twenty eighth of October, nineteen forty one. Age 18. Thank you for your service, sir. He's got a ceramic poppy there as well, which has been chipped away at by the looks of it. But we're, uh, but we're, we put our, our flag on there for them. Love and memory of Wilfred Mary McComas, 
of Dermis House, Burley, widow of Harold McComas, who died 26th of December 1950. Bakerley. I see a wild area there, but at the moment it all looks like a wild area. We all know what autumn's like. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can pick up the horses' noises. <laughs> I think this is the new, from what I can see, nice bench sitting there. More oh, the beautiful colours of the new forest next door. We've got a fat roof. And if you look on that roof, zoom in, there are some fat pheasants. Brilliant. That's why I love a good country house. They, they make their roof look different. But that is gorgeous. Looking at the moss on it, I can see that's going to obviously need to be thatched again soon. Dorothy Lynham Dixon. Frederick and Louise, uh, daughter of Frederick and Louise and Lynham of Montreal, Canada. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the wild area. I say it looked all quite wild, but that's only up there as well. But they have been mowing pathways, which is nice. But most are doing it now. Helps the bees. New one, so we miss them. Um, look, well, I say no, it's old with new. Mary Joseph Mackworth Parade, widow of Herbert or Gilbert Herbert Mackworth Parade. Needs a good cleaning around there before it actually disappears. It'd be a shame. See nothing on that, but the, the pattern obviously. But yeah, nothing. 
nothing from that. Just a bit of grass. You can see from the outside, it is quite modern really, considering. We've seen that before, netting. Whether that's for, to protect any of the flowers for the spring when they come through or when they put flowers in so nothing can eat them. And I've never seen that, that's, uh, I suppose it's a good idea. Can't see the writing on there, but you can see the flowers. It got the scroll. Now this grave here, while I've been here, I've been checking out on some stuff, so I'm just going to give it a quick clean over and then I'm going to do some talking on it. Yeah, the fence give it away through the picture that I see for it. But um, this is all I've come to, to see on this one. This is... Constance Mary Catherine Appleby, known as the Apple. Promoter of women's field hockey, modern field hockey was developed in the early, early 19th century in England and remained within the country's borders until the late 19th century when the British Army introduced the game to the rest of the British Empire and when a British instructor introduced the game to the United States in 1890s. However, in America, 
the sport remained confined to just Goucher College in Baltimore, Maryland. It wasn't until 1901 that field hockey gained widespread popularity due to Constance Appleby introducing the sport to her classmates at Harvard University. Constance was attending Dr. Dudley A. Sargent's summer school in Hemingway Gymnasium when she suggested field hockey as a good form of exercise for women. To her shock, none of her classmates have even heard of the sport, so the next day she demonstrated. One of the classmates in attendance was Harriet Ballatine, the director of athletics of Vasa College. She invited Constance to teach the sport at Vasa. Together they found the American Field Hockey Association, the first women hockey club in the United States. Later that year, Constance published Field Hockey for Men and Women, which introduced British rules of the game to Americans in 1902. Constance taught field hockey to women at Mount Hoakley Radcliffe and Bryn Mawr College, where she was appointed as Director of Outdoor Sports in 1904. During her tenure, she refined physical education. At that time, physical education consisted of gymnastics, corrective work, which were taught by the students. Constance taught her sportsmanship and standardised rules for her efforts. She was invited to take over the physical education department in 1906 and in the year founded a health department with regular doctors' examinations and monitorisation in which her life partner, Mary Warren, served as a secretary. She promoted intramural sports by organising 90% of the student body in 26 hockey teams and continued to remain in active presence with her reputation for integrity until her retirement in 1929. It was her time at Braun Moor that earned her the nickname the Apple. Outside, she founded the United States Hockey Association in 1922 in 1923, she established Mount Ponco Hockey Camp, where she personally taught Betty Schauberger, who grew up to be the matriarch of field hockey in the United States. In 1924, she found edited funds and served as president of the Sportswoman, the first woman magazine to focus exclusively on sports until its last publication year, 1936. From 1936 to 1967, she continued to teach at Mount Ponco Hockey Camp, serving as a visiting coach and other colleges, such as College of William and Mary during World War II. There, she raised funds to send four ambulances symbolised donations by the women's hockey players of the US to the United Kingdom. In 1976, she attended a conference and tournament of the International Federation Women's Hockey Association in Germany. And later that year, she was made an honour member of the All England Women's Hockey Association. In 1980, she was presented and awarded the merit from the Association of Tintu Athletics for Women. She died of pneumonia. So, there you go. That is the grave of Mary Constance Catherine Appleby, the Apple, women's field hockey. I'm actually going to put a flag in with this because if it wasn't for her, hockey wouldn't be about now. And I'm not a hockey player. I'm not a hockey. I do enjoy watching it, but. There's our flag as well. Thank you, Constance, for. Everything you've done for the uh, field hockey across the world for all ladies. Thank you. Rest in peace.
I love the sound of the crispness of the leaves underneath the feet. Still have people visiting in this one. It's beautiful. I know it's plastic, but... Right. Right, I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to call that one here. It's John the Baptist in Burley, in the New Forest. It's starting to get a bit nippy now for me, so... Uh, the clouds are coming down, the fog's coming back in a bit, I think. So, I'm going to say thank you very much for coming along with me on this uh, this journey into seeing what quite really is quite a modern day church as well, I think, compared to a lot of the others that we've seen. So, I thank you muchly. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll leave a comment, I'll, I'll answer most of them, all of them, unless it doesn't warrant a comment. So uh, I've got three that I haven't replied to because they didn't warrant comments or even an answer back. So I've left them there to be looked at. But that is it. But other than that, I do sincerely thank you for joining me. And I bid you farewell. Until next time. Thank you and goodbye. I think we've got a kissing gate, but in a wooden form, so nothing can get in. If you see what I mean, it shuts onto that. Then there, so basically we go in and come back out. That way, the horses don't get in.